rapidly transforming processes by improving agility and precision. By enhancing the automation strategies with technologies such as machine learning and AI, RPA can be used for more complex activities such as budgeting and forecasting, thereby increasing productivity and freeing up personnel to focus on the most impactful aspects of the business. For our next panel, uh, we have experts discussing on adoption of advanced technologies in the finance function. I would like to welcome Mr. Faisal Bukhari, who is the group CFO and VP FMCG, Mohammad Yusuf Nagi Group, Mr. Daniel Khan, Divisional CFO, Abraham M. Almana and Pros Company, uh, Mr. Ashish Khemka, who is the CFO of Lagos Free Zone Company, Tolaram Group, and Mr. Amur Maxel, who is the Finance Director of Tetra Tech. I would like to hand this over to you, Ashish, to lead and moderate this discussion. Thanks, thanks, Jessica, and good day to everyone. It gives us immense pleasure to welcome you all today on the today's panel, on which we discuss about the adoption of advanced technology in the finance function. As introduced by Jessica, that today we have on with us Mr. Daniel, uh, Mr. Maxwell, and Mr. Faisal. I welcome you all once again uh, as my colleagues to the uh, to this panel. To just give a brief and to start on the topic, we all know the changes which has taken over the place in the last few years on the use of the technology. And the recent changes have changed the way one looks at the role of a CFO and the overall finance function. Hello. Yeah. Uh, being a CFO in today's world is not just about uh, number crunching and just playing around with the numbers. It's more about uh, helping and taking the strategic way forward. CFOs in today's world are considered as the strategic partner or the strategic eyes and ears of the CEO. They not only do the compliant completeness and accuracy of the finance number. They are more for the getting the path forward, analyzing it, how we have performed over the past and how that performance can lead into the future. And everyone knows about that the data in today's world plays an important role. And to a certain extent, it's humanly impossible for one, to analyze the quantum of the data which are available in one's portrait. On this front, the machine learning, the robotic process automation, the AIs and all, helps the CFO to analyze analytics and present the data and get the real outcome from it. And that's what we are going to talk about today, about how these important AIs and uh, robotic process automation, machine learning can help and change the overall way uh, one looks at the CFO roles or the finance function on it all. Uh, to begin with, I would like to start with Mr. Faisal uh, about how do you see this whole automation and being a part of an integral finance function. And what are your views on this front? Look, I think, uh, especially after COVID, the digitalization and the whole transformation is, has just not become, uh, you know, a good to have, it has become a must to have. So we have seen that, you know, uh, technology is not just, has just, it's not just a driver for change. It has become an enabler for change as well. And companies who are adopting towards the recent changes and, uh, and adopting the right digital strategy, they are way ahead of, of versus their competition and they are gaining a lot of, of, uh, of momentum because of this. Organizations need to adopt to the, to the changes that is happening. Uh, finance function has to follow the same as well. Like you mentioned, CFO, the role of CFO is not the bean counters that it used to be before. It's more of the strategy, the executioner for the CEO. Uh, and all the CEOs, for them, the biggest biggest and most more important strategy right now is the digital transformation. And uh, finance function uh, headed by the CFOs, they have to work hands in hand with the business functions to ensure that this strategy is put in place. 
Thanks, thanks, Faisal. And you correctly put uh, there the finance function because you know if the if we talk uh, talk about the whole organization as such, the one function which connects each functions of an organization is the finance function. So it becomes kind of a center, and they are well very well placed to uh, drive the digitization or the transformation if one needs to take about the automation. Uh, moving on, Maxwell, I uh, would just ask your views also about the whole automation and how have you encountered the same in your organization? Yeah, thank you, Aisha. So uh, I will follow up with uh, what Faisal said. And then if I give a quote or look at the Charles Darwin popular book, uh, The Origin of Species, and he says, Species that adapt best uh, to their environment have the best chance of surviving. So it's, it's, it's no more secret that we either adapt or we die out of business. I was looking at one research by one uh, university which says that in the, next, in the next 50 years, most of the work we do here will not exist. So what does it tell us? what it says that we need to adapt to the new technologies which are going around us. In my function, for example, now we have drones delivering uh, essential services to hospitals, to those to locations where human beings cannot get to. So it's, it's, it's an obvious for us to be in business as a finance people, or as a whole business in itself, we need to adopt to the new technologies which are uh, coming up this days. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Maxwell. And I you know this has been correctly put forward that in the 50 years, uh, we would be of no use if we don't adopt at that time. And that has been justified by you know, a recent survey which was conducted by PwC, uh, the finance function, and almost 65% of them agreed that the finance function could become more effective by the adoption of the technologies and other development which is taking place across the globe. Uh, moving on to Mr. Faisal, uh, just to introduce that, uh, I would like to understand what is your strategy while identifying the right solution for your business? And to add on it, what is your one piece of advice to other fellow colleagues uh, who are going or who are planning to take uh, on this path of automation? It's a very nice question because, I mean, even if you have the right strategy, but if you, if you don't have the right solution or not, don't have the right execution, it will fail. So in our organization, the way we develop any kind of, of when we go for the solution design or the solution tools, we always keep four to five things in our mind, starting with uh, what's the expectations uh, with our customers and our business partners. Because at the end of the day, we are, as a business, we are here to serve our customers uh, and our business partners. So we engage them at a very early stages. We can try to understand how our digital transformation or our digital strategy is going to fit in with their uh, strategy, how we can work, uh, you know, give them a much better customer experience as well through our digital strategy. Uh, followed by uh, this digital the, the the strategy, how it can optimize our operations. Uh, we always try to keep our processes and uh, ways of working as simple as pos as possible. And digitalization is helping us, you know, to achieve this this goal. And that's uh, so. Whenever we go and we start, the uh, the the key uh, deliverable is to make our processes, our ways of working, externally and internally. As simple as 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 smooth. This cannot happen if you if you are not involving and engaging our organization. At the end of the day, you know there we our team is the one who is going to execute and uh, you know work on the on, on the new tools on the new solutions, and that's where you know we, we also engage them or the key stakeholders from from day one. They are part of this journey. Uh, you know uh, not only in terms of 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 strategy making, but anywhere in terms of identifying which tools, which solutions we want to go. Uh, the solution needs to be something that is flexible enough so that, you know, technology will keep on evolving, technology will keep on changing. So we want to go with, this, with the technology, with the solution, which is flexible. And uh, by the time, it's not that by the time it's implemented, it has already become obsolete. 
Uh, and that's where this is the, uh, the other key element for us is how flexible the technology is in terms of rollout and in terms of upgrading uh, later on as well. Uh, the, one of the most important learning that we have seen, we have uh, you know, gained in the last four or five years when we started our digital uh, journey is that this journey should not stop. So what we have done is we have created a kind of a continuous improvement uh, uh, you know, environment within our organization where we have key members coming from each function. And these are the people actually who can come up and they keep on challenging our processes, keep on seeing what's available in the market, what's the best tool to go with, what's the best solution to go with, and uh, how we can keep evolving. And that's, you know, uh, they, this helps us in terms of identifying what's the best solution to go, uh, what's the best tool to go, and what's the best timeline to offer, uh, to offer as well. Uh, and and this will be my advice to all the all, all of my you know finance colleagues as well is that uh, a lot of people make mistakes when they go into digital tra transformation is they try to make it very complex uh, they don't take the feedback of coming from the organization so sometimes you know it's it completely it's against the DNA of the organization as well so keep it as simple as possible keep it as relevant as possible to your organization something that you know not only your 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 organization but you. I think I think we have lost uh, phases about it. But nonetheless, I think we can summarize what he has said we'll, about, we'll can easily about the effort and, and why we Yeah, Faisal, I think we lost it for some time. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you very well now. You know, I always I always joke make this joke that whenever I'm sitting with the technology people, technology is always creating it. <laughs> <issues. laughs> so <laughs> So, uh, I, so I will just summarize basically what I'm saying is uh, because I don't know from where I, the, the the network had an issue. Uh, so the, uh, to keep it very very you know concise is we need we need to 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 adopt to a solution which is very close to to our DNA which is very close to our, uh, our what's our partners and our our customer are expecting and at the end of the day it needs to deliver. The, it needs to enhance the customer experience. Uh, you know, customers can be in-house customers, uh, purely if I see from a finance point of view, uh, customers can be your outside customers as well, your stakeholders also, be it your banks or your share, shareholders. And if, if this is what we want to achieve uh, the, 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 uh, in terms of identifying the right digital solution, then I think uh, at the end it will be successful. And this is what my message will be to all of my you know, fellow finance uh, professionals is uh, don't overcomplicate your digital uh, strategy or don't try to go with the best in class in the world because not necessarily best in class is going to suit your organization or your region or your, your, uh, your DNA. You need to choose a solution which is best relatable to your, to your organization uh, and to your customer as well and which is flexible enough that it can enhance uh, you know, you can go back and you can keep upgrading, you can keep improving yourself, and you can uh, keep enhancing the customer experience. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Faisal. We will definitely, that's, that's pretty well said, I think. Uh, it's about getting your target set, getting the right audience, and getting the right people on board will help uh, one succeed in the whole process of automation. Uh, moving on to Mr. Daniel, I think you have, we have not got heard from you about uh, if you want to ask it, it's about how automation has been successful in taking out the drudgery in the finance function, what's your opinion about that? Uh, again, the digital trend is the new world in the finance market. And if you can see post COVID, uh, the business dy dynamics has totally changed. It's not about shareholder value now. It's all about increasing the stakeholder value. And the concept of blue ocean strategy is almost dead. I believe uh, the blue ocean strategy is no longer in, in the business world because anybody from anywhere can enter the market and edge you out of competition. Uh, the market is intense. Uh, big and small businesses are fighting for very thin margins. So it all comes down to your operation. Uh, finance, uh, the supply chain, the compliance, all has to see their operations where automation can supersede 
uh, their operations which can be achieved as a as a whole bigger picture for the whole business objective of the company yeah so sure. thanks thanks daniel i pretty put forward say that you know it's you cannot run away from the digitization it becomes the center of all we you know whatever you do uh we are uh, adding to what you have said or uh, just following up on that one how you feel that being agile in the process of adoption of ai machine learning or robotics is one of the things which one should be very much mindful of and what are the primary areas in finance function uh, where you have focused your automation effort in your particular organization again a very very uh, good question as uh, there was the earlier uh, presentation which i was seeing which rohit was explanation i believe there is no single definition for automation uh, in every business automation may vary to business to business but if you dig deep uh, the automation is just basically system of intelligence uh, where it empowers your employees add values to your customer optimize your operation and transform your product this is all automation and finance has a critical role in it if, if finance is not there everything will fall down now finance has a deep pressure where cfos are in deep pressure and i believe the cfos are doing very good job to rethink and redeploy their Uh, their processes where they have to add value and um, at the same time cut the cost but cfos are in pressure to redesign the value and if you see the finance function uh, since beginning we are following an ecosystem of 500 year old system uh, where double entry is using and in beginning the bookkeeping uh, we were using bookkeeping and we were using our accounting closing and then erp came in uh, which shifted the role of business part which increased business partnering insights uh, digital supports risks and compliance but after thing after that which i believe is the evolution of finance is now about how to manage uncertain times uh, handling complex uh, business models driving competition cost advantage and driving digital strategy so now cfos are sitting day and in meetings and meeting where they are driving a digital strategy with the cfo uh, which is essential part of it and this is where finance function has to focus thank you thanks thanks daniel and i know you have correctly said about the definition about the automation to add on to your point i would just like to add on a quote from uh, mr larry page who defined artificial intelligence as you know the artificial intelligence would be the google version uh, would be the ultimate version of the google the ultimate search engine that would understand everything on the web uh, it would understand exactly what you need and it would give you the right thing as per your requirement at this stage or at this point of technology development we have not reached to that particular stage but increasingly we would definitely reach to a position where ai would be able to provide you like a solution that google provides anything what you want can be gotten it through the ai and which is very excited about you know the definition about automation in ai is cannot be put in forward in on that front one one thing which i want to add also as uh, mr fasel was saying uh, there are so many solutions available you have to make sure as a finance function or as a strategy function that any solution which you are choosing has to be close to your dna has to be close to your business objective of the company because if it's not close to the dna then it's it's a lost battle which you are already uh, you know started days ahead when you think think of this uh, strategy as a model and the digital uh, process as a strategy and again i have to i always say to my team as well it's not the digital transformation which drives business it's a strategy which drives business digital transformation is just part of the strategy so whenever the evaluation is happening where business uh, vision business models are getting evaluated uh, i believe digital uh, projects should be in, in inserted to support the business uh, to transform the business into different direction and again uh, on the challenges part uh, challenges uh, we always know the finance as finance people we always know that leadership is very important to support any project 
and again uh, the digital project should not be treated as an it project it's not an it project again all functions has to be a uh, part of it has to put their input in order to get the project succeeded and this is pretty much from my side thank you thanks daniel i think you have correctly put you know everybody knows about that change is something which once get always in the resistance and when you go into a digitization and a digital transformation you are actually changing the way one looks at the business and you always get the resistance on it so if you if you select a process and the system which is which is relevant to your dna you will face the least resistance and that will help them once uh, success of the whole uh, digitization process uh, coming to mr maxwell you know i'm talking about the challenges and other stuff uh, wanted your views about uh, the strategy when it comes to acquiring developing and deploying the right digital talents which is required because you know you cannot separate the human element from the, the digital transformation so what are your views and the challenges you face where with your existing uh, talent pool and also about the talent pool when you are willing to acquire new and what are the different options explored uh, to address the capability gaps which may exist in the organization all right thank you uh, so uh, for the development setup for my business we have seven process when it comes to adoption of uh, a new technology and as daniel and face i put it the the in terms of your development strategy it can come from two ways either through your customers or through the internal uh, strategy when it comes from the customers or the environment then it's about your ability to adapt quick let's take for example what happened during the covid no one saw it coming but those businesses who positioned themselves very well ahead of time were able to survive so uh, when it comes to uh, strategy adoption coming from uh, external forces your strategy as a business need to be embraced and ahead of time but when it comes to the internal one yes uh, we have like as i said seven processes one is about selection i think daniel and face i put it you have to look at your dna what is the business doing what do i need then you move for example just recently we move on to a, a technology called salesforce why did we move to salesforce because our uh, process is scattered of the whole world and therefore we wanted a strategy whereby if i'm in ghana i should be able to see what is happening in india I should be able to see what is happening in uh, Poland in that way. So we move on to the advanced uh, uh, Salesforce platform. So once you do your selection, what do you do? Then you have to plan. So your planning stage involves how are you going to do it? Do you even have capability to, uh, to implement your strategy? So that's where training of staffing comes in. Are you going to do it in-house or are you looking at outsourcing that particular function? So once your planning stage is over, you need to communicate. First, I put it, communication should be a, a lifelong process. It shouldn't end. You need to communicate as you move, out, move along with your strategy. Otherwise, people may fall behind and then it will be difficult. And then you need to also do look at training. This is a new strategy, new technology that you are adopting change always is difficult so you need to train your your staff you need to train your customer those who are going to use the technology for example just recently what is happening between, uh, between russia and then ukraine war the development center has to be there we were sending drones drones to send out essential medicine to those who are at deprived locations so it's also important and then after training you need to test so testing means you need to start small. And then once you know that, okay, I started very small, this strategy, maybe you start with one department, it's working well, then you deploy to all the, uh, you expand to other department, and then you keep on doing your uh, ongoing monitoring to see how well your 
new technology is fitting in and how well are your staff and customers taking over. So it's, it's a whole lot of a process. It's a cycle that you need to uh, start. It's ongoing. You need to always be thinking about what you need and then you go through the process to identify. You start something, you start it small and then you expand it when it's, it, it fits into your overall strategy. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Michael. You know, correctly put forward. You know that uh, baby steps are required when you want to take a big automation. So, if you take the baby steps, you would ultimately reach to your ultimate goal of uh, reaching to the nirvana. Uh, moving on to Mr. Faisal. Mr. Faisal, you know there are a lot of places where you know the digitization uh, change and all can be implemented. Uh, so, what are your views about which are the areas one should target? And how do you prioritize on that front? How to communicate to the team and how to buy in from the team that what is being done is for the betterment of them. And it will not make them reluctant, but it would make them more efficient and enhancement of the knowledge. How the communication should be there and how do you prioritize on the various aspects of uh, digitization? So look, in terms of, of prioritization, uh, where, where you need to start your digital uh, you know, journey, it, it, it all depends in terms of what, the, what kind of impact each different kind of action or, uh, or task is going to do. So, and then depending on the organization readiness. So there is two, always two approaches. You can start with you know, those ones which are low high, uh, hanging fruits. So you will start getting your learning, you will get, you know, Is it only me who is having trouble and listening to Faisal? Confidence as well. Uh, they both were learning as well. <laughs> Again, I think, yeah. Yeah, well, Faisal, I think you are back now. Hello? Uh, maybe we can have someone else take this question now and then we yeah. can go back. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can hear you now, Faisal. Uh, I think by the time Faisal connects it, Daniel, why don't you want to, would you like to take yeah. this up? Sure. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, uh, we are following a, a concept in finance and accounting. We are following an ecosystem which is almost five year, 500 years old. Uh, the double entry method, which we are following till today. And if you see uh, the difference uh, which it might had in future, it will be massive. Because I have seen and I have witnessed and I believe it has been published also that they, now there are systems which will improve and automate and reconcile all your basic entries automatically. And they will create a relationship between your account receive and account payables and reconciliation will be just a click of a button. So imagine that the bookkeeping concept uh, the clothing of month, the clothing of books, the annual procedure, the analytical procedure, which audit used to do, uh, this will go, all, all will get outdated, outdated. Uh, when this, uh, this transformation happens after 10 years, what would be that, what would be the, uh, the function which finance will do? Um, I believe the finance function will slowly, slowly will get outdated. Uh, we will, uh, the, for instance, I was also reading one uh, process, uh, blockchain. Uh, I was reading an article and I also uh, published one on LinkedIn. A blockchain, uh, which brings a concept of three uh, entry bookkeeping, uh, where two parties will pass an entry in one uh, blockchain, um, a blockchain, uh, uh, you can say metaphor, and it will automatically reconcile. So you don't need anyone to, you know, even to see that transaction because it's automated itself and the receiver and buyer is all automatically connected. So there is no one uh, to, you know, just to do a check that if it's accurate or complete or anything. So yes, uh, the finance function will, uh, will going to going to have a drastic change. And if uh, the finance function is still is on, uh, on uh, you can say, a concept of old, and where they have not think about digitization, then I believe they are far behind in the business world. 
Thanks, uh, thanks, Daniel. Uh, Faisal, I think you're back now. Would you like yeah. to add something to the, what Daniel has already said? Yeah, look, I think Daniel has put it in a way where basically, uh, you know, the, the world is, is moving. So it's our choice if we want to, to be ahead of the world or, you know, left far behind. And it goes similarly in the different functions within the organization as well. Uh, finance cannot be right and not, you know, embracing the changes that is happening. Actually, should be the one who should be driving those changes because it ultimately increases the shareholder's value. Uh, important deliverable for any finance. Uh, and so they need to not to embrace this change. They need to be part of this change. And in a way, they need to be. If they, if they feel there is, uh, you know, uh, challenges, uh, distances, how we can go back and, you know, eliminate or smoothen something that the CFO should uh, take into account. Great, great. Uh, that's, that's uh, uh, I think it's. Very well said, uh, Faisal, on this front. Uh, moving on, I think we have one question from uh, one of the audience who wants to know, and we have already touched a point about it. Is uh, he uh, he has a query about is adopting robotics impose any employment risk? Uh, who would like to take it on? We have touched.